There was a young boy in Mecca. He grew up in the life of luxury. He was a celebrity of Mecca. He was one of the most handsome men of Mecca. He came from a prestigious family. His name was Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu. When Mus'ab ibn Umair got word that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was preaching a new message and he was this, that and the third, Mus'ab ibn Umair also remembered that this was the same man whom is referred to as Al-Ameen, honest, righteous, upright people in Mecca. So when these words came to him, he didn't jump on the bandwagon and say, yes, we, I agree with all this. No, he said, I'm not going to judge without having spoken to him myself. And this was at a time when the Prophet والسلام, had no outward mission. He was in hiding, they were in secret. He was meeting his very few companions and believers in a house known as Darul Arqam. So Mus'ab found out that this is where the Prophet والسلام, was teaching. So he went one night and he knocked on the door. And someone said, O Messenger of Allah وسلم, it's Mus'ab ibn Umair. And the Prophet was happy, he was pleased. He said, yes, let him in. He always understood the value of every human being and what role they could have to play in society. When Mus'ab ibn Umair came in, he gave him the simple da'wah of Islam. Upon hearing it, Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu an said, Ashadu in la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna Muhammad rasulullah. So he told him to keep it secret and Mus'ab kept it a secret. And he kept coming and meeting the Prophet والسلام, at the house of Arqam. But in the city of Mecca there were spies. These spies saw Mus'ab ibn Umair going to the house of Arqam and then praying with the Prophet والسلام. They realized he's a Muslim. So they went to Mus'ab's mother and they told him, Do you know that your own son has submitted and become a Muslim? She was shocked, she couldn't believe it. So she confronted him and he said, yes, I've become a Muslim. She chained him in his house and put people to watch over him. She could have chained Mus'ab in a basement of a dungeon and it wouldn't have changed anything because whomsoever Allah guides cannot be misguided. So he remained like this for a while. And then the Prophet came out on his mission publicly. You know, people turned on him, things got very hard. So the Prophet والسلام, gave some of the weakest Muslims permission to migrate to Habasha. When Mus'ab ibn Umayr heard that there were Muslims who were immigrating, he tricked his mother to let him go. And he went with the Muslims in, into Habasha. And then some time passed, word came to the Muslims of Abyssinia that Islam had taken over in Mecca. The people accepted Islam. So a group of Muslims came back. One of them who came back with them was Mus'ab ibn Umayr. When they got back, they realized not only had the situation not gotten better, it actually had gotten worse. No matter how bad things might seem, Allah Azza wa Jal always has a plan for this ummah. Because even during this toughest time, there were people who were coming from a city known as Yathrib. They had been in war for a long time. They had heard about this man Muhammad وسلم, who was bringing peace between people and was preaching this new religion of worshipping one Allah alone. So they met with him on two separate occasions. Very few of them first and then a group of, larger group of them second. And they accepted Islam pledged their support to the Prophet ﷺ, and they asked him to come with them to Yathrib. But he, he said, I cannot, because Allah has not given me the permission to do so. So they requested, send someone with us, they can teach us Islam. So the Prophet ﷺ chose someone to send. Now, who was a Muslim at this time? Abu Bakr was a Muslim at this time. Abdul Rahman ibn Awf was a Muslim. Ali ibn Abi Talib radiallahu an was a Muslim. Some of the senior companions in knowledge were Muslim at this time. But he chose Mus'ab ibn Umair, this young boy, still in his teenage years. The Prophet والسلام, was a visionary. He was not a here and now guy. He sent Mus'ab ibn Umair to Yathrib. He began to teach the Muslims about Islam that were there. And they slowly began to grow. But there were two tribes going at war, the Aus and the Khazraj. The two leaders of this tribe got word that there was a young boy, a kid, a baby 
in their city preaching a new religion that would separate families, that would cause father to turn against son, son to turn against father, etc. They were furiated. One of them was Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh. The other one was Sa'ad ibn Ra'ada. When Sa'ad ibn Mu'adh heard that this young boy was there, he sent someone first. But when it didn't work, he said, I'm going to go deal with him myself. And when he went to Mus'ab, he had a weapon in his hands. He said, I'm going to kill him. And he said, going to leave or I'm going to kill him. He told him, look, you need to get out of here. Or I'm going to make you leave. Now, look at how Mus'ab dealt with him. He looked at him and he said, you're a wise man. You're a leader of your people. You're intelligent. So you should be able to listen to me discern whether what I'm saying is good or not, choose to accept it or reject it, and if you reject it, I won't bother you or your people. You see, this is the attitude of the believer, the firmness of understanding that the message we have is more powerful than their weapons. And Allah can guide whomever He pleases. Sa'ad ibn Ma'ad said, okay, yeah, he's right. He said, I'm listen. So he listened to the simple message of Islam, after hearing it, accepted Islam and went back and called his tribe. And they began to enter into Islam, one after another. Then the leader of the other tribe, he said, out of jealousy, that if he's good enough to be a Muslim, I'm going to go be a Muslim, and it'd be better one than him. Competition. So he accepted Islam. And then Islam began to take over in Yathra. 